Hey guys, okay, so I've been super crazy busy uh, prepping for a speech that I'm giving at Cal Poly tomorrow and also figuring out what's going on with Antifa, if they're gonna show up and try to shut stuff down. I've heard there's only like a small group at Cal Poly, so it shouldn't be a big problem, but I'm hoping to see some of you guys there and it's gonna be a great time. I will also put the video of the speech on this channel for sure. But aside from that, I really, really needed to do an update on this channel. It has been way too long since my last video. And also I didn't really get around to talking about all of my crazy adventures that happened in Europe. Now I've been really wanting to talk about one specific event that happened to me while I was in France, but I was kind of worried because I didn't get much footage of the event, so this is going to be more of a story time video, and I really, really hate story time videos because, well, word of mouth is not always the best form of sharing information. It's not necessarily the most trustworthy, and you've had YouTubers like Tana Monju, Monjo, I can't really pronounce it, uh, ruin the whole storytelling genre. But today I'm going to break my rule of not liking story time videos because this is just such an important event that happened to me while I was in Europe. I just need to talk about it. So today I'm going to be alternate dimension Tana Monjo, who instead of doing story times on being banged by a toothbrush and getting super drunk, instead goes to no-go zones in France. And like I said earlier, normally story time videos are not something that I would do or be okay with, but with this specific event, I feel like I had enough people there to corroborate the story for me that I feel kind of okay doing it. You can talk to Tim Poole, Luke Radowski, or Brittany uh, Pettibone if you want. They were all there with me at this event. Um, and they will definitely corroborate everything I'm saying in this story time. I would have loved to give you guys footage along with this, but every time I tried to film, I was told to stop immediately or we could get in trouble. Lee Red, do not do that, please. I know you want to get the footage, but we have to do it in a smart way and not jeopardize our safety and everyone else. Anyways, let's jump into things. So myself and Tim Poole and Luke and Brittany all got news that there was potentially going to be a protest out in the suburbs near Paris. And we decided to head out there and see what was going on. The protest was supposed to be around a young man who died as a result of being chased by the police. Now, normally when I think of these things, I think, oh, maybe he was shot by the police and they're protesting an unjust death that happened. Or usually it's something that's like up in the air and it could potentially be police brutality, but it could also potentially be self-defense. That's usually what people go crazy over. No, this one was completely different. When I heard why people were potentially going to be protesting, I, I was <laughs> I was utterly shocked because this guy wasn't shot by police. He wasn't beat up by police. He wasn't strangled or anything. The way this kid died was he was trying to evade arrest and decided to run away on a V... I think it was a ATV... No, it wasn't an ATV. It was some sort of some sort of motorcycle or something. But he was trying to run away from the cops that were chasing him and he, the police didn't crash into him, a bus didn't crash into him, no. He drove himself into a bus and people were protesting the police because of this. I don't know why, I can't explain why people were protesting, but they decided to protest. So we figured, well, we'll be there to get footage of the crazy riot that potentially happens. When we got there, we started walking into the neighborhood and I was like, oh, <laughs> it's one of these kind of neighborhoods. And I know people are going to get offended by that, but what I mean is a completely unassimilated immigrant community that when you walk in there and you have blonde hair, they all stare at you like, what are you doing here? Do you want to get hurt? There were a few different journalists there from different outlets. Some of them had done crazy stories all over the world and had a lot of experience in these kind of volatile situations where you could potentially be hurt for being in an area like this. And one of the guys that was there turns to me and says, do you have a hat that you can cover your hair with? Like, can you put your hair up? You're gonna get us in trouble. And I was like, oh my goodness. And like, these are like liberal, pretty liberal guys that uh, were talking to me, but just genuinely for my safety, they turned to me and were like, hey, can you hide that hair? Like you're, we're standing out way too much right now. I thought that was pretty crazy, but you know, it's, I figured for my safety. So I put, I tried tucking it into the back of my coat that I had, I put it in a ponytail. Um, and I just thought about that for a second. And I was like, I am in France a first world country and for my safety I am having to put my hair in a ponytail and hide it in my coat. Okay, I guess that's just the world we live in right now when it comes to 
no-go zones. And then I find out from a few of the journalists here that this isn't even a place that people consider a no-go zone. There are other places that people consider a no-go zone in France, but this place we were specifically at was not really considered one. So that was pretty mind-blowing to me as well. Anyways, this is me hiding my hair and being asked to be careful was before anything had even gone crazy. Nothing had popped off. There were just people kind of standing around on street corners, watching and waiting and kind of just crowds of uh, North African and Muslim men there just waiting. And the police weren't going near this area because if the police went there, they would be attacked. So the police had kind of just checkpoints around uh, this neighborhood and they wouldn't go anywhere inside it. It was still daytime at this point, but things were starting to get a little uncomfortable as we were waiting there. We started having things being yelled at us and the translator was getting a little uncomfortable. He would just say that they weren't saying something very nice. That's That would, all he, that would be all he would give us when men would yell things at us. And we kept having people approach us and scout us out. And every time I tried to turn on my camera to film, all of the journalists from every different kind of outlet would turn to me and be like, do not do that. Are you crazy? Are you trying to get us killed? Like if you film these people, they will hurt you. So what I was advised to do was if a riot or a protest happened, then I was going to be allowed to film in this area because if there was nothing to distract the people with, they would apparently attack me or anyone with a camera or basically white people. Sorry, that's just the truth is they would attack white people because you're not, this is their neighborhood. And that's what they said to us, get out of our home, get out of our neighborhood. This is our turf. Those were some of the things that were yelled to us that we did have translated for us. Uh, it reminded me a lot of Molenbeek. When I was in Molenbeek, the exact same thing happened whenever I had a camera on or uh, even just the camera up, but not on and people saw it, they would be like, get off our turf. This is our land. This is, you shouldn't be here. They'd yell that at me even without the camera, just because I don't look like I should be in a immigrant enclave in Paris, right? So things were starting to get a little bit heated in there and uncomfortable. And we were trying to talk to some of the guys. Some of the guys were nice that were in the crowd, but they were kind of hinting at us the entire time, like you should not be here, get out of here. And then at one point, we have a crowd of guys come up to us and say something to our translator and our translator turns around and looks us in the eyes and says, walk away as fast as you can right now. And we're like, what, 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 what are you talking about? So we just turn and walk and they're like, Lauren, Lauren, move, get out, get out. And the translator just starts like, walking and he's like don't look anyone in the eyes just get out of here right now and we start to turn the corner um <laughs> if you ask tim he, he'll be pretty mad at us because uh, at this point we had left him in the falafel store nearby and he was still in this area that we were just told to exit but our translator was like no we'll text him to walk away as well just get out of here now we can't hold up for him they are going to hurt us if we stay. So we started walking as fast as we could out of this area where all the men were standing. Um, I still didn't know what they said to us because the translator didn't really tell us, but basically it was something along the lines of, we are not going to be okay. <laughs> Definitely not going to be okay if we stay there. Um, and I kind of suggested to one of the journalists, like we had a car there. I was like, let's get in the car. Let's get out of here as fast as we can. And they turned to me and they're like, because these are guys that had been in situations all over the world where it's gotten super volatile and violent and everything. And they looked at me and they're like, Lauren, we are not going to the car. That is the last thing you want to do in a situation like this. And I'm like, what, what are you talking about? They're like, if you get into a car and a crowd surrounds you, what's going to happen is you can't run away. You'll get stuck. They'll, st they'll stop in front of the car. They'll smash the windows in. They'll drag you out and they'll kill you. And it was one of those moments where I just was like, holy crap, this is happening right now. Like I could potentially be seriously hurt in this situation. And someone who is not an extreme right-wing maniac conspiracy theorist, in fact, quite liberal, has just told me not to get in a car because the windows could be smashed and I could be dragged out of it in the suburbs of Paris. Yeah, so uh, that was a pretty uh, freaky experience. So after that, we decided we were going to stay with a larger group of people all near the police and emergency vehicles and nowhere near this area where we would be alone by ourselves with just the community members in this suburb. And also we managed to get Tim back at this point. He did not die, which was great. And another thing that was just crazy was when we got to the police checkpoint, they just kind of looked at us, the cops, and they were like, 
I hope you guys know how to run. <laughs> like the, just the whole attitude about the situation. Like the cops wouldn't go in there. If they did go in there, they would be attacked. And they were asking us like, hope you guys can run. Like you guys are kind of dumb to be here, right? Like it was just so insane, the whole idea that, and I still couldn't get over the idea that I was in a suburb outside of Paris, first world country. Um, I tried to get some footage after we had walked out and you could just hear there were different points that we were trying not to get too close to where the violence was erupting and windows were being smashed and there were explosives, not explosives, but like fireworks, apparently fires being set at towards the police. This isn't considered a no-go zone? Bonjour. Bonjour. On veut pas courir. Merci, merci. Merci. You're saying there's a fire. There's a fire? That was on that side. Yeah. Where are they now? Are they, are they moving? Well, it's echoing. No, it was that way. What are your friends saying? What are they saying? It was kind of difficult to understand what was going on because a lot of it was going through a translator. But I still, we, we managed to get out of there and we were totally safe after all this. We got some footage of a bit of the wreckage that happened. But just overall that experience from the first little bit of being told to cover up my hair to the second bit of being told to leave now to how uncomfortable I was in a suburb in Europe and then being told this isn't necessarily a no-go zone to most French people was one of the most shocking experiences I had in Europe. It still makes me think if people don't really consider this a no-go zone then what is a no-go zone in Europe? And just the fact that people don't think enclaves being created through immigration is a problem is shocking to me. You have a bunch of people who have no interest in assimilation and no interest in being kind to people who are not like them. Not just not kind, but have no problem potentially committing crimes against people who are not like them. It's a huge problem in Europe and the more these enclaves start to grow, the more dangerous Europe becomes and the more divided it becomes. And this is a problem that we're going to have to address and talk about at some point. I know this is something people are uncomfortable with and don't like to talk about because they really hate the idea of questioning the dogma of multiculturalism, but seriously, if these enclaves continue to grow, that experience that I had that one day is going to be an experience that lots and lots of European people are going to have to go through. And they're not necessarily going to have guides like I did. And they're going to get injured and hurt and potentially killed. And it's happened before and again and again and again. Whether it be enclaves like Luton, where Tommy Robinson can't walk through the street without being beat up, or places where it's become so bad that they have whole rape gangs, like in Rotherham, with young children being kidnapped. This is something that needs to be addressed. The clash of civilizations is happening right now, and it is not working. It is not some kumbaya of holding hands of multiculturalism that you see in elementary school. It's not that. That is a myth. It is a lie. And we need to admit that to ourselves in order to solve this problem. Because these no-go zones and enclaves are very real and they are very dangerous if you are not a part of it. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'm hoping to see some of you at Cal Poly tomorrow for my speech. And for those of you who can't come, it will be on YouTube in the next couple of days. Really appreciate you guys. Big thanks to all my Patreon supporters and I will see you next time.